Hi guys, this is a teardown of a Convergent Design, uh, design Nano Flash. This is basically a professional uh, video recorder. It has uh, SDI, HD, SDI inputs and outputs, uh, HDMI inputs and outputs. This records uh, MPEG-2 at up to 280 megabits per second. Uh, saves onto compact flash cards. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what's in this. I believe it's based on an FPGA. So let's get into this thing. This supports two record modes, iframe which is basically just a series of uh, still images and long up which is basically one uh, still image followed by 14 different images. In uh, iframe mode it works up to uh, 100 megabits up to 280 meg megabits per second and in long up mode, if I can get it into that, come on, hmm. there we go. Long up mode goes up to from 18 all the way up to uh, 180 megabits per second. Okay, first thing we got to do is deal with this pesky warranty sticker. We should be able to just carefully peel it off with a knife. There we go. go. Let's see. Should. What do we have in here? Oh, there it comes. It's pretty easy. Okay, a couple of few FFC connectors have to get out there. Okay, so a few FFC connectors get off here. There's that one. And the display one. And just one other connector, probably for the backlight. Okay, we've got three boards in this. Um, two of them made by uh, Convergent Design, a third one made by Sony. That seems to be a Sony uh, video encoder module. Yeah, not too much on this, just a bunch of bypass caps and a few logic chips. And this, this has the interface to the uh, compact flash cards. There's probably an FPGA or something underneath that. I can see there's a chip connected to the base plate as a heatsink. Okay, so that pops off. Oh, more stuff under this one. We have the ST part and ISSI. We'll have to look up uh, what some of these are. Xilinx Vertex 5, now that's a powerful FPGA. Uh, what else do we had? DRAM connected to it. And analog devices, that must be the, uh, yeah, that's an HDMI. What is that, the input or the output? That is the uh, HDMI input. And the output is connected up to this other, much smaller chip. Here's the main board. Uh, this has a large uh, Vertex 5 FPGA on it, a uh, XC5V LX30T. I believe that has about 30,000 logic elements. Um, has a DRAM connected to it. There's two. These are both power supply control chips. Uh, some analog devices. 
9398, that's for the HDMI input. Uh, this other one is for the HDMI output. The little, uh, these, these little long ones are uh, ESD protection. These are um, single-ended to differential buffers for the um, HDSDI outputs. You can see the uh, differential traces coming out from the FPGA. Uh, they probably use the big or high-end FPGA like this for mainly for the uh, CERTAs to generate the high uh, high-speed serial lines, which go up to about three points something gigabits per second on this. The lower end parts at the time probably didn't have these this uh, high-speed output hardware because they don't see there shouldn't be much that requires the very high-end FPGA except for those uh, for that output requirement. There's not too much on this side of the board, just some inductors for the power supplies, bypass caps, and oscillator, and a few things. This board is labeled the uh, UI board, Nano Flash UI. This has a, uh, what is this? A Dallas uh, 8051 based microcontroller. Uh, has a couple of level shifters, probably because the micro runs at 3.3 volts, the FPGA IO probably run at 2.5 or something. Uh, backup battery for the RTC, These, that goes to the LCD, that goes to the uh, auxiliary connector. Audio I.O. on the other side. Um, this is a 16 megabyte parallel flash. I believe that's a uh, SRAM. That's an audio IC. Uh, I'm not quite sure what uh, these other ones are. Yeah, this is a uh, 512K by 8 uh, SRAM, probably for the CPU. And this is a an RS232 uh, level converter. Uh, one thing I'm curious about is why they need so much uh, ROM for the CPU, because there's no, as far as I know, there's no images stored in this. It's just a basic uh, menu uh, menu system. Here's the video encoder module. Uh, this is not made by Convergent Design. This actually says Sony on it. Uh, it has two large Sony custom chips. I can't find any information on those. It looks those, like those each have their own uh, DRAM. There's strangely two Spartan FPGAs. There's an uh, XC3S1500 and XC3S500. Uh, um, this one looks like it has a Winbond uh, DRAM. I'm not sure what size that is. This has a expansion flash memory and uh, this is a uh, Xilinx platform fa flash to configure the FPGAs. I'm curious as to why they use two FPGAs and not just one. I figure they could put everything in one, but maybe they needed more I.O. and they didn't have uh, enough room for a bigger package, so they figured they split it over two, but that must make development uh, more difficult. And this section over here is just uh, power supplies. And this board is also pretty uh, high technology. They have a lot of um, micro vias, very fine traces. A lot of the vias are uh, blind, meaning they start from one side of the board and don't go through all the way. And this side is quite boring, just uh, bypass caps, and I believe these are some uh, level shifters. If you look under these Sony chips, they're a pretty fine pitch. It looks like they're uh, 0.5 millimeter or so compared to the uh, 0.8 millimeter probably on the RAM. Okay, all back together now, and the moment of truth. Backlight comes up, and it still works. Excellent. Anyway, that pretty much concludes this teardown. Hope you found this teardown of the uh, Nano Flash interesting. Thanks for watching.